So, a young college student is enjoying a fresh bottle of water on her break between classes. Seems innocent enough, but what happens to the bottle when she's done drinking the water? A lot of times, our waste doesn't end up going to places that we think it does. In this case, the water bottle bounced from the recycling bin to an overflowing trash can and ultimately ended up on the ground. These are leading to greater problems of plastic pollution that have great environmental consequences. So given all of the plastic that we're surrounded by in our daily life, you know, what, what can we do about this issue? Um, Diana Cohen, founder of the Plastic Coalition, has something to say about that. Another thing that we're looking at and asking people to think about is we've added a fourth R onto the front of the reduce, reuse, recycle three R's, and that is refuse. Whenever possible, refuse single-use and disposable plastics. Alternatives exist. Alternatives? Another thing that we're looking at and asking... Sorry about that. Alternatives. So this really got us thinking. What is a way that we can help people reduce their plastic waste while also help making their lives easier? Introducing the Infinity Bottle. My name is Sandy Merritt. My name is Belle Soifer. I'm Riley Lewis. And I'm Byron Owen. And today we're going to introduce our product, Infinity Bottle. So we're going to pitch our business plan to you. We're going to start by giving uh, a background and why we care about this issue and uh, what really went into thinking behind creating this product. Then we're going to introduce our product to you. We're going to go into talking about our strategies and marketing and advertising, so how we're going to reach our target market. And then we're going to discuss our technology and strategy, so how will Infinity Bottle be implemented on the ground. And then we're going to finish up with some finances and talk about profits. So at the beginning of the semester, we all sat down and we thought about what is a big problem that is extremely wasteful in today's world. And we thought that the biggest problem, or one of the hugest problems today, is plastic uh, disposable water bottles. Nearly 38 billion water bottles are wasted every single year, and of those 38 billion, only 10% get recycled. Um, reusable water bottles are often too much of a hassle for everyday life. I know personally myself have bought a couple reusable water bottles and after about a couple weeks of you know using them every day, going home, washing them so they don't get smelly or dirty, uh, I just get sick of it and I, and I just put them in a cupboard and I don't look at them again for a while and I go back to using disposable bottles. Um, the majority of, as you can see on this graph here where the majority of our waste ends up today. Over the past 50 years, we've seen a significant increase of waste that goes to the landfill. However, we've also seen a lot that has gone back into recovery for recycling, composting, and energy recovery. These are all great improvements we've made over the past 50 years, but we can always continue to be doing more. So we've come up with a revolutionary product that we think you're all going to love, and that is the Infinity Bottle. It lets the consumer hydrate without the waste, and it's designed just to make your life easier. You don't have to worry about using a uh, reusable water bottle and cleaning it every day or going to the Circle K and getting disposable water bottles and throwing them in the trash. It eliminates the hassle by not <clears throat> eliminates the hassle by allowing the consumers not have to wash their bottles, like I've said. It cuts out the waste by not having consumers use disposable water bottles every day and throwing those into the trash, recycling bins, and who knows where those really end up, into the waterways, polluting our earth. Protects the earth by not letting those, that trash infiltrate our water systems, into the ocean, into landfills, and it provides endless refreshment to our consumers. So who are we going to market Infinity Bottle to? We thought of introducing Infinity Bottle the University of Arizona, and in our market analysis, we specifically looked at two zip codes, 85719 and 85705. 85719 includes the University of Arizona. We then looked at the total U of A population and broke that down by students, which came out to roughly 43,000 people, faculty and staff, which came out to around 12,000, and that came out to a total of 55,000 people at the U of A. From our research, we found that 70% of faculty, staff, and students 
are interested in sustainability. From that 70%, we said 10% would be our target market for introducing the Infinity model. And that came out to roughly 3,000 students, 850 staff members, for a total of around 4,000 as our introductory uh, target market at this point. This table further breaks down our population specifics. As I mentioned at the U of A, the total population size was roughly 38,000, and we looked at 10% for our target market, which came out to 3,800. Then we looked at the zip code 85719 and subtracted the U of A population from that, so we wouldn't count that number of people twice. And that came to a population size of roughly 2,000 people. Then again, we said 10% of that would be our introductory market, and that came out to 200 people. Then we looked at the zip code 85705, which is by the University of Arizona, and came out to a total population size of roughly 55,000 people. Then again, 10% of that market, and our total market that we would be looking at to promote the Infinity Model to would be roughly 55. So when we added together 3,800 plus 200 plus 5,500, it came out to roughly 9,500 as our first introduct introductory market that we're introducing in the model too. So what would make people want to buy Infinity Bottle and what makes it so great? First of all, it's quality water that's purified here in Tucson and it's local. Second of all, it's tasty water. As a native Tucsonan, I know that hassle <coughs> of leaving my water bottle in the car, coming back thirsty, and my water tastes really funky and odd, and I don't want to drink it. And that creates more problems. On top of that, there are these grody water fountains that I don't want to drink water from, and I know most of the people don't. Brita, uh, for example, Brita Water Bottle, they offer uh, to filter water from any water source, and you have a portable with you. So then you have to fill up from these growing uh, water fountains, and each filter isn't compatible with a newer model. On top of that, it's affordable and convenient, which are very important for college students, and it's great for the environment. Plus, we have a unique trade in water bottle program, which Riley will discuss. So one of the biggest parts of our business is the actual process of the Infinity Model. So the process will start out when the customer purchases that initial infinity bottle. The process will continue, the customer can return the water bottle, uh, the water bottle comes back to our facility where we'll sanitize, sanitize the water bottle, refill it, and then return it back to our retailers so the customer can purchase the water bottle as a refill at a lower price. So to be more specific, the customer can purchase the infinity bottle at their local retail store uh, for approximately $25 is our MSRP. From there, the second time they purchase the bottle, it'll only cost a dollar for the refill. So initially, we're asking them to pay for the bottle, and then they can return it and get the refill at a reduced price. Next, the customer can return the water bottle to any of our local stations, which would be at our retail stores. So uh, the customer can go down to the local gas station that carries the Infinity bottle and just return an empty bottle at their after that, we will have delivery people go out to our re the retail stores and collect our Infinity Bottle. This will happen probably once a week, and we will increase that as our business increases. After the, our delivery person grabs the Infinity Bottles, they will be brought back to our facility, where they will be evaluated for any damage or anything like that. They will be sanitized and then refilled with our filtered water. This way we keep everything clean and ready for the customer. Following this, the Infinity Bottle will be taken back to our retail stores and uh, it'll help fill the shelves and keep it so that we always have Infinity Bottles available for our customer. After it's on the shelves, the customer can then pick up a, refill water, a refilled water bottle for uh, just a dollar and the water bottle is always kept cold and refreshed and ready for the So the areas we would like to target to uh, to carry our Infinity Bottle would be locations around the University of Arizona campus. For example, we have Circle K's on Wolf Speedway and 6th Street, and 
then we have uh, areas like the Red and Blue Market, 7-Eleven, CVS Pharmacy, all the areas that get a lot of traffic from the University of Arizona community. So how do we get our word out there? We'd like to start off with print media. Uh, we would print advertisements in the uh, Arizona Daily Wildcat, which is read by a majority of the population here. Uh, we would also like to get our word out by putting information on the pop-ups in there. This is like the student unions and other areas around campus. Another area we'd like to uh, use is the radio broadcasting. A lot of our students are driving to and from campus and faculty as well are driving to and from campus at least twice a day. And so they are being, we would be able to reach them through the radio quite easily. Uh, we would reach both the camp, which is the student radio on campus, as well as 94.9 and 93.7, which we have found to be popular stations with the uh, UA community. We would also definitely choose to work with social media. Social media is free. It's something that all of us are familiar with using. And it would be a great way to get our word out there, uh, spread the word about Infinity Bottle, and be able to show the good that it's doing to our Tucson community. Here's an example from our Instagram page. As we're working with college students uh, and the development of social media, things aren't known unless it's on social media. And that's the great way to spread word of Infinity Bottle because uh, college students are constantly bombarded with different things in the media, and if it's not on their phone or trending, it's forgotten. Also, this picture shows how we're utilizing different sustainability groups on campus, like compost cats, to promote our product. Uh, here's an example of Fiji bottle compared to Infinity bottle. Fiji uh, water is known for their artisan water, and we did a comparison of if we were to buy a 24-pack case per month for a year, and that came out to roughly $370 for Fuji water, whereas for Infinity water, uh, to maintain the water bottle to refill it for a year, that was $125, which is less than half of what it would cost to maintain and drink Fiji water every day, and that's considering if the individual drinks the recommended amount of two liters of water per day. On top of that, with Fiji water, once one finishes drinking his or her water, there's no way to get the same uh, Fiji water unless you buy another bottle, which creates the problem of waste and affordability. Whereas with Infinity Bottle, with our convenient locations around campus, one can refill his or her bottle. And since we're all over campus, college students look for convenience, and that's how they map out where, where they're going to eat and where they're going to get their water, and Infinity Bottle fits that need. So what will Infinity Bottle look like on the ground? Our location will be a small warehouse about one mile south of campus. Um, this will be a small warehouse with a loading dock for our delivery truck. These facilities will also include our headquarters and our main offices, our equipment for sanitizing our water bottles and keeping them clean, our filtration system for filtering our water in-house, and also equipment for refilling the bottles, in addition to any extra storage that we might need. This location that we found just south of campus is really convenient and great for us because it makes it really easy for us to access our retail location, such as the gas stations we're targeting, the cat marts throughout campus, and the student unions that Riley mentioned. So, bottle pricing. We will start by charging a wholesale price for Infinity Bottle of $18 to our retailers. Our wholesale price of refills for our retailers will be 65 cents. Now, during our first year of business, we estimate that a customer will probably refill their Infinity Bottle about 10 times a month. And they'll probably be utilizing the Infinity Bottle for 10 out of the 12 months out of the year. That's probably about how much time they spend, you know, in and around, active on campus, maybe needing an Infinity Bottle. So let's do the math. At a cost of $18 per bottle and 100 refills per Infinity Bottle per year at a price of $0.65 cents per refill, that produces a total value of $96 per Infinity Bottle per year for our retailers. So costs and expenses. 
We broke it down into a couple different categories, and I'll start by discussing our cost of doing business. These are our marginal and variable costs. These are things like the cost of purchasing additional water bottles, purchase, uh, purchasing and filtering the water that we use to actually fill the bottles, and hiring any additional employees that we might need as we expand. We want to hit marketing and advertising really hard, especially on campus. So we're going to invest a large initial amount of about $9,000 into our print media, our social media, and our radio broadcasting. Our cost of operations will total around $130,000, and these are all of the costs that it takes to keep Infinity Bottle up and running, like our delivery truck. Also, salaries and payroll taxes, so paying us, that's another large cost. It'll be around $162,000. Our utilities, so water, electricity, telephone, will total around $3,600 a year. For a total expenses of $402,695 during our first year of business. Now, I know that's a really big number, but let's talk about revenue. So, doing a whole market analysis, we estimate that we're going to sell about 5,000 bottles during our first year of business. We don't necessarily expect every single person who sees our advertising to purchase a water bottle. So we went with a conservative estimate of 5,000 bottles sold. So at a cost of $18 per bottle times 5,000 bottles sold, in addition to 500,000 refills, that would be getting 10 refills a month over 10 months for each infinity bottle, and a cost of 65 cents per refill. So we add all, all of those numbers up, and we actually come to a net revenue of $415,000 during our first year of business. So we are going to have some less sales returns and allowances for net sales of $411,800. And then when we subtract out our total expenses, we come to a total profit of around $9,000 during our first year of business. So we actually turn a profit during our first year, which is pretty good. So what is the life cycle of Infinity Bottle? It all starts with the consumer, when they purchase an Infinity Bottle. Then they get to drink our fresh, cold, filtered water, and then bring it back to any participating retailer. At this time, they can pick up a refill for a dollar, or you know, if you're done on campus for the day and you're heading home to where you have water from the tap, um, you can just return it and then get a voucher, and then you can bring it back to get the nominal refill price. Then, about once a week, we will pick up Infinity Bottles with our delivery truck. We'll transport them back to our location where we'll wash and sanitize them to keep them just as fresh as the first time they were used. Then we filter our water and then refill all of the Infinity Bottles. Then we put them back in our delivery truck and bring them back to our retail locations and where a customer can then pick up a fresh Infinity Bottle. And this, product can this process can continue indefinitely truly making this an infinite water bottle. What's the value of that? So, if the MSRP for a consumer is $25, they spend a dollar a refill, 10 refills a month over 10 months, that comes to a total of $125 per infinity bottle over just one year, which I think is a little better than the value of this eyesore of an overflowing recycling bin. Not to mention that all of this waste is intermixed with landfill garbage, so all of that waste is ultimately going to end up in the landfill, even if you meant to recycle it. As talked about earlier in our presentation, we're first targeting, targeting the University of Arizona and its surrounding areas. After um, Infinity Model takes off at the university, we'd like to expand within Tucson, including the Catalina Foothills, as well as, as, well as the Sonoran Desert Museum, which has recently placed a ban on disposable plastics. After our expansion through Tucson, we'd like to move statewide and capture the market with the Infinity, with the Infinity Bottle throughout these areas. Thank you everyone for your attention. This is Infinity Bottle. Any questions, comments? about that earlier today actually um, and so 
the way it'll work is if you bring in the infinity bottle, then it's obvious that you already paid the $25, and so you can get the refill. And if you get the voucher, then that's your proof that you already paid the $25 to get the nominal cost of the refill. So since you want to hold on to the receipt or a voucher, if you had already bought the bottle? Yeah, something around those lines. We were also maybe playing with that idea of an app, but that would be, you know, maybe three years down the road. I can see in here, and maybe I missed it, um, in terms of transportation costs and sterilization costs. Sure. So our transportation costs, that was included in our uh, operations expenses, and so I kind of just lumped them all together. I have a much more detailed spreadsheet uh, on my computer. And then, what was the other? Sanitizing? Yes. Um, we have, uh, I think that was in our... That was in our cost of operations as well. We lumped that in there. Um, but we do have sanitizing equipment um, filled into our profits. We tried to go with something more low temp so that we could avoid degrading the plastic over time. Yeah, that was my other question is what, what's the what's it made of? What are the materials? Um, it's going to be made out of some like high density BPA free plastic. And we decided, we played around with a couple of different materials thinking about metal versus glass plastic and we thought with our target market and thinking about you know can our age we're kind of I, I'm kind of clumsy we're a little accident prone maybe drop a glass <coughs> water bottle um, so we just want to make sure that we're offering really high quality plastic that is free of a lot of the chemicals like BPA that people tend to shy away from. So what's the approximate life cycle for for how long a how long is it going to last? Years, How many breaks? uses or timeline? So theoretically, I don't think this mouse works anymore. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you noticed. But um, the sorry, what was the question? The timeline. The timeline. The, 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 the lifespan. Life so right. theoretically, it should be able to last indefinitely. But we know that plastic does degrade over time. And since we haven't actually been able to actualize this product on the ground, we don't really know. So uh, if I buy an affinity bottle and I'm a freshman, I don't ever have to buy another one. Unless you For lose all it. my college career. Unless you lose it. But so, yes. <laughs> so as a freshman, you would just have to pay the dollar per refill price, which is much cheaper than just buying a traditional. Indefinitely. Now I'm a senior graduate. Wow, that's great. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> Question for you about the footprint in each store. You're showing the bottles on the shelf and the coolers and the like, but that tread in space, if you're expecting to have 5,000 bottles in rotation, they're not going to all go back to the original store they were purchased at. What impact is that putting on your retailer for, for those returns? How are you accommodating space in terms of their floor space so yes. we have a wholesale price of $18 per bottle and then 65 cents per retail and then we offered a manufacturer suggested retail price of $25 per bottle and then a dollar per refill so that differential between our wholesale price and the retail price will really be where our retailers will turn the profit and this is where my I was going to ask about profit I was talking about the physical space so a retailer has 30 bottles on the in the chiller, and say 25 people come in to trade in their bottle for a new one. Where are they putting that 25 times seven days? By the time you come in to pick up, they've now got boxes of empty sitting somewhere. Yeah, we have a we're going to have a receptacle. It's okay. space. <laughs> the question so, is how how are you how are you accommodating that with real tips? So we would have to work out a deal with the retailer to purchase that space to okay. hold them, and then especially as we got more about 25 a day, we would start uh, having our delivery person pick up more often. Um, uh, so based on that. What is your estimated number of bottles that you need to have actually in the system if you think you have 5,000 users? So we accounted initially um, in our price of operations to have 10,000 bottles on hand. So that way, if we have 5,000, we can 
always have some in our storage facility that are ready to be refilled with the And what is the approximate turnaround time from returning that bottle to it being reprocessed and back into the store? Is it 24 hours? Is it same day? Well, it'll be about a week since we pick up the bottles about once a week, and the time it's going to take for us to sanitize and refill the bottles is going to be, that's pretty short. I think the, the longer the longer lag will be between when the customer drops off the bottle and then when we pick it up from the retail location. Okay. So, yeah. the last one, I'm sorry, it's just, I'm trying to make the numbers work in my head. You have an $18 cost per bottle to the retailer, giving them a $7 net profit. What is your profit margin per bottle? Our profit margin per bottle? Um, that's a really good question. I know that our total profit margin, so we could theoretically do a 9,000 divided by 5,000, and then that could give our theoretical Shy profit. Shy of $2 a bottle? Yeah, I don't have to calculate. Okay. Yes? So in the first year, you have an audience of 42,000 people, 50, 50,000 people, whatever you want to do. In the second year, the market falls to 7,000 people, the size of the incoming freshman class. If you think you're going to sell $5,000, you're going to be selling 70% of those people bottles, not 10%. Did you take this into consideration? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not, not sure I understand the question. Okay, in your first year, you have, uh, say, 50,000 people on campus, and you sell 10% of the bottles, that's 5,000. Yeah. That's year one. Year two, all those people have already bought bottles. Year two, your audience then becomes the oh. in freshman class, oh, okay. which is 7,000 people. So now you sell 700 bottles, not 5,000. Did you consider how you have to expand your market reach in order to just maintain beyond year one? Actually, I, I can. So uh, one of the things we initially came up with with our marketing strategy was that we would take a, a somewhat initial loss when the co when the person bought the water bottle, and the majority of our revenue would come from purchasing the refill. And so if they had already purchased the bottle, then our, we would continue to sustain our company with the refills. So you feel you would be able to sustain the refill even if you had a thousand bottles sold the next year? Yes, and then we would continue to try and expand outside of the uh, university in the Arizona area and try and expand more into Tucson. Um, and I thought it was really cool. This is actually a really recent thing that happened. The fact that the Sonoran Desert Museum put a ban on disposable plastic. And so I think that's a really perfect opportunity and a segue into kind of helping maybe introduce Infinity Bottle to the wildlife or the Desert Museum. The question I've asked all of the groups so far, and your salary figures, have they taken into account workers' compensation or insurance? Um, I, we took into account insurance. We did not take into account workers' compensation. I don't think that was the offer. Uh, it's required by law. Oh, no, we did not. Okay. 